We are just days away from a historic celestial event, a total eclipse of the sun, not of the heart. On April 8th, more than 31 million people from Texas to Maine will be in the prime location to experience this sun-tastic event. Even if you're outside of the path of totality, you will still see a partial eclipse where the moon will look like it's taking a bite out of the sun, kind of like Pac-Man. Joining us now is NASA expert Kristen Weaver to tell us more about it. So, Kristen, thank you for being here with us this morning. We appreciate you waking up early. <laughs> Happy to be here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the eclipse. I mean, what can people expect? We're not in the path of totality. So what are we going to be seeing in our area? So you're at about 97%. So that means that you will see most of the sun get obscured uh, when the moon comes in between the earth and the sun. You will not see the totality. You'd have to go a little bit further north to get that, but you will see most of the sun blocked. There is a big difference between that 97% partial and totality, though, I will say. Huh. Okay. And there's got to be a safe way to do it, right? Because we know that it could be damaging to our eyes. So first of all, how do we safely view it? And is there a way that we can take pictures. Yes. So um, make sure that you have solar viewing glasses, you know, some of these special glasses that you can see that have the right ISO standard on them. And that's the only way to look at the sun safely during any of the partial phases. And you can actually use those same glasses and cover your uh, your cell phone lens. If you have a regular camera or a telescope, you will need a, an additional special filter. And you can actually view the, uh, the eclipse indirectly. Anything that has a hole in it, even a colander, you can stand with the sun behind you and project project the sun on the ground or on the on a paper beneath you and you can actually watch the the eclipse that indirectly that way. You mentioned the filter for the for the cameras. You can't like just put the glasses that you buy for your eyes in front of your camera lens, can you or would that work? <laughs> For your cell phone camera, you can actually, you can, as long as it covers all of the lens and partially that's because you're looking through, you're not looking directly through the viewfinder on your cell phone. But again, if you have like a, an SLR or a DSLR or a telescope or binoculars, you'll need more specialized filters for those. Okay, that makes sense. Our meteorologist was just talking to me about this. She raised a point. There's some concern about animals. How could this impact like the birds that are flying around and things like this that, you know, it's getting a little bit darker out in the afternoon like that? So it's not dangerous for them or anything like that, but the, the, the animals may behave as if it is sunset and they're going into their night cycles. So that's actually a really interesting way to observe the effects of the eclipse indirectly on the birds. Will they go to roost? Uh, will the insects start to make nighttime sounds? That's actually something that can be a very interesting multi-sensory aspect of observing the eclipse. So pay attention to that. That, that is interesting. And okay, you are an expert. So as an expert, what are you most excited about for this eclipse? Well, so I'm, a, I'm I'm in earth science, so I'm actually really focused on some of the effects of this, the, the, the eclipse on the Earth's atmosphere. My citizen science project that I worked for, we're asking people through the Globe Observer app to make observations of clouds and air temperature. There's also, uh, we're, they're, they're sending uh, rockets and uh, aircraft through the ionosphere and looking at the effect of the eclipse on the atmosphere. So that's what I'm most interested in about. How does it affect us? Although it's an amazing event, it's going to be wonderful to observe too. Yeah. I bought my glasses. I hope that they're not scam glasses and that they're with the right ones and I won't get blind when I try and look at the sun all <laughs> next week. So thank you. Well, you know, you can check them and make sure that if you look at a light through them, you don't see anything through it. But if you look at a regular light and you see nothing through it, that's a good way to check to make sure that they're, they're dark enough. They just need to be really dark. Oh my gosh, that's so an make awesome sure that. tip. Thank you so much, Kristen. See, I think a lot of people learned something here today. Thank you for joining us. And we check for scratches. <laughs> yeah, take care.